Welcome to Voice Rising with Cara Johnstad. Enjoy weekly conversations with leading luminaries, pioneering visionaries, singers, poets, musicians, and sound healers as we explore the profound role our voice plays on the path to self-realization and global enlightenment. The internationally acclaimed singer, composer, author, healer, recording artist, voice expert, creator of Voice Your Essence, and founder of the School of Voice, Kara Johnstadt uses her extraordinary spiritual gifts to empower others. Everything in this world vibrates. Everything has a frequency. A pioneer in the field of voice work and transformational songwriting. Her breakthrough methods are helping thousands of people worldwide fine-tune their body-mind-spirit system and unlock the energetic frequencies of limitless creativity, health, and abundance. Share your voice, ask your questions, join in the conversation. Receive life-changing, positive transformation and rise together to create a sound world. And here's your host, Kara Johnstad. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Voice Rising Show, a place where conscious creatives gather to explore the power of voice. I'm your host, Cara Johnstead, and tr- today we have a truly remarkable guest. Uh, I've had her on shows before. Her name is Porter Singer, and I had the pleasure, like I said, to do many interviews with Porter Singer. Now I'm now I'm a little bit, uh, I don't know say, I'm, I'm a little bit... Uh, fumbling here because I was, uh, I've actually only had the chance to have one interview with Porter. And at that time, she was known as Sirgun Carr. And um, I'm very excited for her to be back today. She has a new, brand new project out there, which just got picked up by Hay House Publishing. And can you believe it? She is writing new songs for an Oracle deck. So, <laughs> Porter, welcome to the show. It's good to have you back. Hello, thank you. So a lot has happened. A lot has happened, (laughs) obviously, in my life and in your life. Um, Like I said in the introduction, you have done many, many albums under the name of Sirgan Carr. And now you're coming out again with your, I believe it's your birth name, Porter Singer, a beautiful name. And you also have a new project, which is creating music for Oracle, the Oracle deck. Um, Where are you at this present moment in time? Oh, wow. Well, I am physically in Washington State near Seattle. Nice. Nice. And I am, I guess, energetically... Um, in in process, always in process. <laughs> in process, very good, <laughs> very good. Yeah, it sounds like a lot is happening. There's been a big shift in your life. And how long have you um, shifted? Your new work is coming out under Porter Singer, so that's where everybody can find you. Um, for the yeah. people that though have have followed you for many, many years. Some people might be aware of the shift and some people might not because I tuned into uh, Spotify today and your previous albums, you have 100,000 listeners a month. Go girl. I mean, go good for you, right? And uh, that's only on Spotify, right? So so we have yeah. a, a lot of streaming devices. People love your voice and love your music. Um, yeah, what what created that change for you? Is it, is it you just wanted to be more, uh, more expansive maybe with your choice of uh, what you're recording and what you're bringing out? Yeah, that was part of it. Um, I, you know, we, we went through a little bit of a dark night of the soul in the Kundalini Yoga community and, and had you some did. things come out into the light that weren't um, super favorable. But, yeah. you know, what, what I kind of, what I kind of came to was that, um, a realization that I had been kind of hiding from who, who I really was. I, I yeah. put on this whole kind of spiritual, you know, costume and identity and stuff. And it wasn't that it was completely inauthentic. I think I was still being myself, but, um, but I was, you know, sort of turning away from a part of myself that maybe I hadn't wanted to take forward with me. And so becoming Porter singer again, because that is my birth name. You're right. Um, was, kind of 
you know, deciding that I'm okay. I'm okay as I am. (laughs) And I can, I, I can be myself and also be spiritual. And I think that, I think everybody needs to know that really, you know, you don't have to change to be spiritual. You already are. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So share with us more about this Oracle deck. You are creating music as far as I know. And, 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 or well, share with, first of all, the listeners, what is an Oracle deck for those of, you know, for those of you out yeah. there that, that don't know the difference between, for example, a tarot deck and an Oracle deck, like how would you, how, oh, yes. how can okay. we that, envision that? So my friends, Nina Monjambre and Edie Art created this deck that I discovered last January. And the way that Nina explains it is that it's something that you can kind of go to with a question. It's an open-ended interactive experience. So you ask it a question and you pull a card and then you read what the card says. And maybe you feel into what that word means for you or what the image says to you. And it allows you sort of a vehicle for personal inquiry and insight. Yeah. So that's how I would and, define it. And and how do you craft the songs? Does your friend send you over the picture and then you do the message and the the you you sense what the message is? Or does she have affirmations and messages that she's working on? Or do you send her yeah, the music? It's funny. I mean, so this was a completely like tangential offshoot from her project. She did not anticipate that I would be making music for this. She created yeah. the deck. I, I'm thinking it had been around for, I don't, I don't know, a little less than a year, maybe a little over a year. Nice. And when I got it, cause I bought it for myself because I just, she explained it to me and I wanted one. I started to use it every day. And I just, I got this like exciting idea that I wanted to create a song for every card because they were so I, I don't know how to explain it. I think you'd have to you'd have to see it, but the artwork itself is just so gorgeous. The whole thing just really inspired me. So and I was in a little bit of a lull in terms of um, you know, where do I like do I make more mantras? Do I, you know, it's like what do I do? And so this sort of just came at like the perfect time because they did end up being affirmative songs, you know, like some of them have um they're more they're songs, but some of them are more songs and some of them are more like affirmations <laughs> and uh, you know, like easy things that people can repeat, but no, they're all, they're all written by me. Um, mm-hmm. I did, I was inspired by the booklet that Nina wrote. So they're definitely, um, well, the way I envisioned it was after the person would, so it's not a replacement. It's like an enhancement of the deck. It It's like you, you pull a card, you have a question, you get, you know, the card trauma. Oh, that's the one I just pulled. Okay. The <laughs> number three, three is trauma. <laughs> Haven't written that song yet, actually. <laughs> but you, you have, you know, you read it, you have this experience of like, oh, that's why I needed to hear this today. You know, whatever the message was that you got. And then you go listen to the song and the song like enhances your experience of it. It allows you to bring it forward into your day and to have something that you can sing along and maybe get stuck in your head and really integrate into yourself. That sort of thing. Yeah. You said trauma, right? You didn't say drama because my headphones are trauma. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Trauma. You know, do you know, funny. I don't I, think I've ever pulled that one. <laughs> you know, I know it's probably because my, my, my headphones are so odd today is yes, that they're having their own trauma experience. But I, you know, there's an interesting thing. I'm sitting here in Berlin and of course, in Berlin, we, we are also, you know, speaking the German language. And it's very interesting because trauma, the word traum, trauma, the, the word trauma is in German. It's the same word as in English. But the word traum, which would be T-R-A-U-M, means dream. It's a dream. I don't know Ooh. if this inspires you for your 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 creativity, but... I always found this link very interesting. Like it's, you know, you have the, the dream and then you add an A, which is trauma. You have trauma, you know, trauma. Wow. And then you have trauma, which it's almost like you have the dream and then you add the ah, and then you have the bad, <laughs> the bad dream, the nightmare. Oh. You know, the, it's like you have the bad dream. And then yeah. always, I always found that link so interesting, right? I mean, oh. I, I'm like, I love how words are, created somehow like I always ask myself like why 
you know, why was this word, like, where does this word come from? And so I always love things like this, and I never understood it except for, you know, are we dreaming while we're awake? Are we creating, you know, what is, oh, well, what is real, trauma, what is not real, yes, right? Trauma is the reliving of a movie in your mind, which is a yeah, dream, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and many people say, I, there's another definition. I, I, uh, I heard oh, once, fabulous. which is so good. It's too much, too soon. What is it? Too much, too soon, too fast. So mm. it, it just means that for many of us, we think that it has to be these really, really big, you know, things, right? That, for example, your your dad died with three or, you know, you were abused or... But a lot of times all these little things, if some children are ready to cross the street and go get, you know, bread at the bakery when they're five and other ones, they just don't feel at all ready. Mm. And they're there. It's too much, too soon, too fast. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we all have our, we all have our divine timing when things feel safe and when things feel good and when we feel supported. And if we don't get that support from our community, we can have these traumas in our body um exactly tell me is the track i am the love jai ma from this oracle deck because when i went onto your home page i yeah. saw a beautiful yeah it is yes it's from the mother card from the mother card i have this created yeah. by nina is it mo gendre mo gendre Mon genre. Mon genre. Yeah, nice. yeah. <laughs> and Eddie Art. Eddie Art. Mm. So let's let's listen to this beautiful song. Uh, I am the okay. love, Jai Ma. And then people can get an idea what's happening with the music linking to the Oracle deck.
So you're listening to I Am the Love, J. Ma and Porter Singers with me here at Voice Rising. Porter, what is it like when you are deep diving into your songwriting? What does that creative process look like? Do you have any rituals? Are you, yeah, do you do it early in the morning? Oh, do a yoga that. session yeah. before? <clears throat> yeah, so for, uh, it, it hasn't been consistent, but um, previous to this experience of writing for this deck, it was actually fairly random. I would just have an idea and I would write it in my notebook. And then at some time when I had the time to look at it, I would maybe write a song and maybe not. For this one, it actually was a daily practice each morning of meditating, doing this deck, asking myself a question, journaling about it, and then seeing if something came. And I wrote at least during that period, I wrote at least one song each morning. Beautiful. And yeah, I, I should mention at this point, because we haven't yet, um, these songs are all co-written with um, Songs of Eden, um, Mons Ek in Sweden. Mm-hmm. So it, it's not just my project. It's also a collaboration with my um, music partner in Sweden. Yeah, Nice. You're coming closer to Europe. I sense it. Yes, yes, we've been collaborating <laughs> for a few years. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It, I mean, Sweden a, is a great place to be. They have a lot of wonderful music producers. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. come come to come to Europe once in a while. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I, I do. I, I mean, I haven't, you know, since the, well, have I? No, I did last year. I did last year. I haven't done any touring there since before the pandemic, though. But yes, I yeah. would love to. Yeah, exactly. Talk to us about how your music or this card deck, I mean, you you just brought up the pandemic. We've really gone through some pretty intense times the last years, especially as musicians, yeah. but I think collectively the whole world. And it seems like uh, there's a lot of, there is a lot of healing that's happening collectively. There's a lot of trauma. There's a yeah. lot of mental illness that is yeah. um, becoming apparent. So as a, meditator and singer songwriter and creative conscious being um what would you love your music to give to that not only individual healing but the collective healing of our planet how how can we Mm. harness this use music to harness um the energy for positive change well i really i feel like music naturally is a vehicle for positive change because it if you're bringing the messages that are coming that are hopefully you know received in in love so much of Mm -hmm. what we reiterate is like sort of similar ideas that are based in this you know fear (laughs) uh, fear vibration so I mean if you're pulling in and so many people are there's so much amazing conscious music out there um but you know you're pulling in these messages and you're not just saying them, you're imbuing them with your, your personality and your melody and your emotion. I think it's the emotion that, that really does it. Because when I pick how I'm going to sing something, and I'm sure you can relate to this as a, as a singer, you're, yeah. you're imbuing it with, with your, excuse me, <clears throat> yeah. with your feeling. And that is the feeling for me is the thing that translates the message as much more than the words, you know? That's what we so, say, energy and motion, yeah. right? The emotions are, and people are often very, or, or that's my feeling as a, as a singer and songwriter is that I'm very at home in those waters, right? I'm very mm-hmm. at home and in, in um, I, I feel like even my, my career has been like a river, you know, zig and zag, you know, here I go. It's not, it's not a straight line, Mm. but many people in the spiritual community are very much watch the breath. uh, Don't get too emotional, Mm. uh, you know? And I think that we forget the beauty of bliss and passion and, and even understanding our own personal shadow lands and that's what mm-hmm. happens in i mean i was going to ask you that actually as a singer songwriter do you find yourself gravitating more towards positive affirmations and messaging or do you also while you're journaling 
sometimes dive into those darker corners that are not always lovely. I mean, they can be pretty sticky. And do you mm. also get drawn to transform that darker layer into more light or into more beauty? Or is that something that doesn't come into m your music? Oh, no, I love that question. Yes, for sure. I I have actually a, an album that I'm working on currently that is all songs that I wrote during my transition from changing my name and all of the things that I was experiencing over the past, well, not all of them, but the highlights of the past two years. And all of that is, as you were describing, you know, really getting into the grit of, of what I was experiencing. But what I what I love about that sort of thing is is that it, each song is sort of its own like transformational experience. Yeah. So I start and I'm in I'm in a place and the song allows me to see see it differently. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I think is the power of of you know authentically sharing our messy emotions and our 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 realness, you know, I'm not, I'm not constantly thinking I am the love <laughs> throughout my day. Um, sometimes, <laughs> but you know, yeah, not, not yeah. 24 hours a day. So to pretend that that's, you know, entirely my reality, it should be yours would be not very authentic. I, I, I love yeah. you that you say that Porter, because there's something powerful. I mean, that we see it also in blues music and a lot of different music, this transformational process that happens when we name our suffering or our struggles and we name it. And then through the song, we're asking those personal questions. And often we come out at the other end in a better place. And I mm -hmm. also think it's very courageous for you. I mean, we don't have to dive into the, the Kundalini yoga scene, but I remember I did ask this question in an interview once and um, and, and the question was, um, I mean, for those listeners, there were some abuse issues out there around, you know, which we don't need to get into, but I found it really fascinating that when we are all sitting together, breathing together, meditating together, singing together, tuning in together, that, that we might get into situations of abuse of power and nobody's calling it necessarily out. And um, I, I don't know much more than that, but I think it's a very important lesson for all of us, whether it's governments or whether it's bosses or wherever the abuse is, what is our role also with our voice? Because we can sit and chant and do mantras until the cows come home. But if we don't really tune into in the word integrity or truth, you know, for, our, for ourselves... Um, then we might be missing the point. And so I can imagine that this album is powerful because it is mm. it is a, a big step to take on the path of a new yeah. identity and to change your name. And it's also mm. a very big step to return and say, you know, that's a facet maybe of who I was. That's a part of my journey, but it's not my entire journey. That's how I see mm. it from yeah. someone who's also been a long time on the path. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, not, not sure yeah. if that resonates with you, but yeah, I, for sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. That resonates. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I can't claim to know what other people got out of that experience of, yeah. you know, coming from a pretty strict, it depended how, how, how involved you were in it. I, I went all the way, you know, I, I yeah. became a Sikh and, and all that. So, you know, there were lighter ways to be involved in Kundalini yoga and still are, but um, I just loved waking up to the fact that my, my knowing was in my own hands, you know, yes. that I was powerful enough to make choices for myself and to know what was right for me and to, to take the next action because I had put that into somebody else's hands, not realizing, you know, but I had put that in someone else's hands for so many years and it was scary and then it was really empowering so exactly exactly and I think a lot of people it's not only that scene right a lot of people that are listening to you they can relate to it in 
other scenes because the patterning is the same. Where do we give up our power? And it's so easy to say, yeah, listen to your inner voice, follow your heart, whatever. But you had a community of a lot of people listening to their mm. voice <laughs> and a lot of people that were doing energetic work for the highest good of all. And still it mm -hmm. happened, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's, that's powerful to look at those dynamics and to also see, mm -hmm. I, th I think it won't happen again to you. I know with me, I've had similar things. I was not in the Kundalini yoga scene, but I've had similar things with producers or with mm -hmm. people where you're, you're very vulnerable and you're open and you're, you know, you're in your heart and you're doing the best project that you can. And suddenly you realize, wow, there's a piece of integrity that's missing and mm. uh, and we get wiser and hopefully we still realize that the love is there and we don't get too bitter in the process, right? Um, so, so before we continue, Porter, we're going to take a brief pause and acknowledge our sponsors and our supporters and um, we're going to be right back then with more about transformational songwriting and the power of voice and your new music projects. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com with happy clients all over the world, Kara Johnstad knows that your voice is the missing link to more authenticity, abundance, creativity, and health. An internationally acclaimed voice expert, Kara's breakthrough methods have helped thousands of people successfully heal their voice wounds and extinguish the story of self-doubt and shyness forever. Join in group trainings, attend online sessions, Schedule one-on-one -on -one time and invite Kara to work with your organization and community. Get started today. Go to www.karajohnstad.com and receive a special guided meditation designed to fine-tune your inner voice and welcome you on the voice journey. This is Kathy Beal, host of Celestial Compass, featuring astrology you can use. Celestial Compass points you to what's going on in the sky and what you can do with it down here on Earth. We also explore fun, effective, and cosmic tools for navigating this adventure we call life. Join me the first and third Monday of the month at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for Celestial Compass. It's enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's not, not excited, excited for, for summer, summer break because she may not be having lunch again until September? or a war veteran who's He's having a hard, hard time, time landing, landing a job and getting back on his feet. I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I, I am, am hunger, hunger in America. America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back. You are listening to the Voice Rising show on Ohm Times Radio. And before we continue our conversation with Porter Singer, I want to take a moment to express our gratitude. Ohm Times Radio and Voice Rising thrive on the support of listeners like you. And we would be grateful if you could spare a moment to leave us a review on the major streaming sites and subscribe to our show your support allows us to bring you more captivating interviews, delving deeper into the realms of knowledge and inspiration and talk about the voice. So now let's return to the world of music and healing and the world of Porter Singer. Welcome back, Porter. 
Hello. Hi. So, so Porter, talk to us about, in your opinion, why it's so crucial for individuals to find and embrace their true, authentic voices. And what does finding our voice have to do with that spiritual journey and self-discovery? Ooh, that's a big one. Okay. That's a big um, one. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> fish. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think that there is, um, oh, here's a fun, here's a fun, okay, <laughs> I'm okay, trying to think okay. of what me, angle, me... what angle to approach this in. Okay, here's a fun one. Um, so what I have, what has been the most um, amazing discovery for me is this, this idea of an, our authentic voice being different than our honest voice. Mm. And, and here, and I, I find this fascinating because if you think about yourself at any point in your day and what you would say and what would be honest, a lot of what you might call authentic, what, what you will end up expressing will be very different depending on what mood you're in and what state mm -hmm. of mind you're in. Mm -hmm. So I was introduced to this concept of authenticity in terms of your voice as expressing the highest possible perspective at any point. Mm -hmm. And that really, that's really helped me because <laughs> being able to express from the highest possible perspective, in other words, not saying the nasty thing that you're thinking, because that really isn't who you are, you know, and coming back to that song that we were playing, you know, I'm not necessarily thinking I'm the love all day, but I have to believe that somewhere inside me, I don't actually think mean things. If you like investigate, you know, how you're thinking and why you're thinking something, it's usually you're trying to protect yourself, you know, usually some sort of, um, like some sort of uh, belief system that's not serving you. Anyway, so finding your authentic voice means being able to express from the high, like the most authentic part of yourself, the most, um, uh, what am I trying to say? The most um, aligned part of yourself that is the closest you can possibly get to what we might call our higher self or to our, you know, so when we can express from that, from that, then we are connected to our, our higher self. We're connected to our soul, which just feels good. So why is that important? Because it feels amazing because <laughs> you want, yeah. everybody yeah. wants that experience of being able to um, tune in to that that aligned state, that state that you're in after you meditate or you do breath work or you sing. And then being able to share that is just another amazing piece of that puzzle. And we have this voice that is such a gift where we get to basically transmute these sensations that are happening within us and then hopefully find the, the best possible feeling one and then choose to, you know, bring that forth into the world. I love that viewpoint because there are all these phrases, honesty is the best policy, et cetera. But you and I, and, and I think many people out there realize that the voice can uplift and can heal and the voice can also mm. destroy, right? One mm. honest comment in the wrong moment can literally put someone um, back like years mm. and, and bring so much guilt and shame and, resignation and so if we if we do what you were what were you were suggesting and see if it's aligned with our our higher being or our higher selves then it 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 comes with a different intent it comes from a different yeah it's it's beautiful i think the other thing that i've been always blown away by and you must know this because you've been doing a lot of concerts and like like i said at the beginning of the show a hundred thousand listeners i mean good for you only on on one streaming site, so we have many streaming sites, right? So, um, is that music is like an individual process? It's your process there mm. in the in the room. But when you're in a concert, your words are going into the blood and bone of mm. those people that are in the concert, and they carry that vibration with them. Or when they're listening to your tracks and have their headphones on they carry that vibrational field with them at all times. So that's another mm -hmm. reason to be 
authentic and not only deeply honest, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very beautiful. Exactly. So can you guide us through an exercise maybe or, or a journal prompt or an exercise that you have just played with that helps someone come in contact with their own inner voice? Oh, sure. Um, well, one of my, my favorite things to do is actually just to ask myself a question. You'd be surprised what comes. Maybe you wouldn't. Maybe someone else would. But, um, you know, to, to get yourself into a more centered state, usually when you have a question. So, for example, if, if something has happened and you're all riled up and you're feeling that emotion deeply, you, you, you will probably want to allow that to settle a little bit before yeah. um, before doing the journal exercise. But you know, writing, writing, like, why, why is so-and-so, you know, this way, or why do I feel this, or, you know, whatever your question is, and then allowing yourself to just get very still and just write freehanded all of the things that come up, and the things that come up are so, um, are so interesting, because when we allow ourselves to get very still and write, I find that your your higher consciousness sort of takes over and writes for you and allows you to see things in that event that you weren't conscious of because of your frame of mind at the time. You know, when we get, um, when we get upset, which is totally natural, like, <laughs> but we get upset. We just have to know, you know, our, our frame of our, our perception gets so shrunk, you know, what we're able to see um, gets so limited. So this exercise just allows me to, see a little bit more clearly and a little more from the situation and maybe like even come even come to some well a lot of times it'll allow me to actually be very grateful for the the experience because I will have learned something from it about myself yeah yeah that that is the the beauty of journaling anyway also right and to have that inner conversation and realize that there's so much to be grateful for even if things work out in different ways sometimes than we expect, still there's a lot of golden nuggets that we can take with mm -hmm. us. Where were you when you wrote the track Never Alone? To um, share with us a little bit. I'd like to play it um, in a second. Yeah, or... that's, that's one of my favorites that we've done. So we, we wrote 10 of the 10 cards so far, and there's 44, mm -hmm. so we're, we're still working wow. on it. But this one is... I can't remember which number seven is. I think it's seven. I just think it's that maybe. But anyway, um, yeah, it's from the abandonment card. And this card actually was the reason, maybe if I had seen the trauma card, that would have also been the reason. But this is the reason why I chose not to title the songs, the names, the exact names of the cards. Mm -hmm. um, because this song isn't about abandonment. It's about knowing that you can never truly be abandoned because you're always with yourself and that you're, you're always with your inner child. So this, this song has so many meanings. You're never alone. You can sing this to yourself and know that, um, that you are supporting your inner child. You can imagine that your spirit guides and your, you know, I call it my team are singing this to you that, you know, mm -hmm. you're always being supported and you're never alone. It could be something really simple, like a mother singing it to their child. I mean, there's so many different ways that it can be interpreted, but, you know, for specifically for this deck, it was you chanting it to your inner child and soothing your, your inner child, telling them that they are always, always supported, even when they, they couldn't see it. And that certainly now, as you are an adult, that you are there for yourself. Yeah, it's powerful work. This inner child work is powerful work. Let's mm -hmm. listen to the track, Never Alone. I love 
You are listening to Never Alone by Porter Singer, and Porter is with me in studio. Porter, think back of a memorable experience that you had when you sensed that your voice and your music had a healing impact on someone's life. Mm. How was that for you? It's funny. The first thing that I think about is when I was maybe like nine Mm -hmm. and my, my friend's mother always wanted me to sing Edelweiss to her. Anytime I was over there. I love that (laughs) song. Would you sing Edelweiss? Oh, it just makes me feel so good. And I remember as a nine-year-old thinking it was a little annoying, (laughs) but, um, but it, but I think it, it, in retrospect, that was sort of one of my first um, clues into what you just said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, blossom and forever bloom and grow, right? I mean, yeah, it was, and 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 it's actually a very, very, if if one knows the lyrics, it's a very positive song in a very mm. tragic uh, mm. moment of history. So, um, yeah, Edelweiss, that was one of my dad's favorites. Too. Uh, I saw on your homepage that you do have a songwriting course out there, so you're guiding people to get in touch with their authentic voice. Um, what are your suggestions for people that want to oh, yeah. that want to that come to their own on their own songwriting journey? Yeah, I think that what I've learned more also through the teaching of it is just how simple it is to write a song, especially when we change maybe our concept of what a song is or can be mm-hmm. um, because a song is just something that you sing to yourself, you know, and any two-year-old can write a song. <laughs> so yeah. um, I, I really wanted to teach people who didn't even consider themselves musicians, how they could take something that they're experiencing or feeling or something that they want to feel and experience and turn it into uh, an emotional piece you know something that they would think to themselves and that would make that feel um, expressed and when they sing it back that they could in a way I guess comfort themselves or remind themselves and so I'm assuming just like a two-year-old 
is writing all the time songs and three-year-olds and four-year-olds, we, they're walking around and writing songs. They're just, they're, they're really singing all the time while they're moving mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily need to play piano or ukulele or guitar no. to be able to write songs. You can sing a cappella or you can sing into your phone and, and is it true or, or are you like oh no, absolutely you need yeah, to yeah. learn your chord progressions no, no. before you oh no like I said this is for non-musicians I mean it's, it can be for musicians too that's fine too but um you don't need to be able to play an instrument to write a song no I and I I bring out like in one of the one of the modules I like bring out a whole bunch of like pots and pans and tambourines and things <laughs> like if you nice. have something like yeah. this at your house nice. you know and you want to play around with it then you can you can do that Talk to us about vulnerability. What is what is uh, what role does vulnerability play? And for you, in more in the public eye, do you find yourself in a balancing act between how how vulnerable can I be or share, and at the same time, I'm going for a bigger and bigger audience? Is that good? Is that bad? Is that tricky? Hmm. Does it make you nervous? Hmm, interesting. I think, I don't think that that's something that I'm consciously thinking of, but as you're asking me it, um, I'm pretty open. I think that yeah. I am, uh, I don't, I don't conceal much um, to, in terms of my process or, you know, what I share in my songs or even what I choose to talk about on social media and stuff like that. I, I, I don't. I seek to be as authentic as possible in the sense of um, I don't feel, or I am, I should say, I am trying to, I'm intending to as much as possible, not aim to communicate in a way that is trying to get me to look a certain way. So I think that that helps in terms of vulnerability, because if, if I'm sharing and I'm opening up my heart, but then the outcome of how somebody receives it is the most important thing to me, then that's going to be painful. Um, and that's okay. I can, you know, I can process that. But if I'm just sharing because, well, that sounded like a fun thing to share, or like, you know, why not, you know, then, then I'm not so attached to how people are receiving it. And so it's a lot easier to be vulnerable. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes total sense. We talked a little bit about healing the voice. We talked about meditation. We talked about yoga. Where do you see the evolution of songwriting taking us? Because from my standpoint, it does seem like there are more singer-songwriters out there with guitars and pianos mm -hmm. um, than there definitely were in the 80s and 90s. There are more people stripping it down and... Mm -hmm. There are a lot of sound healers working with, you know, singing bowls and crystal singing bowls and everything. But uh, do you see that there's a, a a movement happening with songwriting, which is bringing us straight to the heart, like straight mm. there? Yeah. I mean, I see, you know, it's like the more people with, with guitars and singing bowls and ukuleles, like the better. I think we should all yeah, be singing all the exactly. time. And everybody's going to reach, you know, different people in different ways. And um, I think that that's really exciting. Yeah. I mean, I've noticed in pop music recently, you know, not everybody obviously, but like people are talking about things that they weren't 10 years ago, five years ago, you know, um, I think it's, I think we're, we're all able to tap into, you know, um, that love vibration. And I think no matter, um, no matter what your instrument even if you're not a songwriter, you know, maybe you're just having conversations about it with your friends. Yeah, um, there's a great yeah, world definitely. to imagine, right? <laughs> and I mean, you're making it happen, I'm making it happen, and then we inspire everybody out there who's listening, pick up the spoons or, or start, <laughs> you know, put, put some rice in a, in a can and put some tape on top and put some bells on your on your ankles and um that is my idea of a fantastic world it's like when the world <laughs> goes dark we go light you know it's kind of mm. like okay we have mm. to we get to to play um we get to play out there and um mm. 
sing and dance and and but not only in the dance studio like like in the bay oh yeah in the shopping mall like in uh, in the yeah. parking lot right yeah exactly do you have any you when is this big release with hay house coming is oh it... well so the the hay house thing is that the the deck is going to be exclusively published by hay house okay in next year i think by september next year and then once we have all the songs together we're going to see what um what we can do in terms of you know uh, aligning that with with the marketing and publicity yeah. and everything so exactly. but right now we're just we're releasing one song at a time. Um, our last one is going to be this Friday. Yeah. And then we'll do the 34 more. Do, do you have a certain <laughs> time that you release at the full moon or, I mean, that's what Peter gave We just does. did one a week. No, we just did one a week. Nice. Um, it was, it was odd because we did them randomly. Like I decided we were going to do them in order to do the first tense. We're going to do one to be the first the tense. But I decided to release them quote unquote randomly. And it was funny because every week the card would come out or the song would come out. And that would be my theme for the week. <laughs> but just all the experiences would just line up with, Oh, that has to do with my mother or, Oh, that has to do with feeling safe or, you know, that sort of thing. So it was, uh, it's fun. And I think in that way, it is a really fun concept because, if you, if you take an Oracle card and then you look at everything through that lens, um, it helps you see things so differently. And I think one of the things that impedes our spiritual growth the most is just getting stuck in routine and how we see things. Yeah. I mean, I love the idea of like having the Oracle cards, then pulling one, maybe putting it on your altar or putting it in a special place. But once you get a melody, and normally the melodies, they do kind of hook somewhere, then mm. you don't necessarily have to put that beautiful oracle card in your back pocket to go walking with it, right? Because it might right, be right. pretty crumpled by the time you get back from the woods. So <laughs> you can, yeah, you can have that affirmation or mantra or 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 focus of that inner child work or mother work just you're, you're walking with it you're working mm -hmm. with it you're focusing on it and it's, and it's a beautiful way and to to do a new kind of practice bringing you yeah bring bring mm -hmm. you a, a different uh way to work with the cards right it's very lovely absolutely well so i Super thank portable. you exactly i thank you for um being with me today here at Voice Rising. Um, for everybody out there, also mark your calendars because we have next week with us, he's also from the West Coast. You might know him, Porter. Paul Levy is going to be on the show and he's talking about his new book. Uh, I loved his last book. Oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. Are you serious? I'm, I'm serious. reading the book. <laughs> really? Are you reading the last one or the new one? Well, the new one, I don't know if it's out yet. I don't yet. know Maybe. what... I don't okay. know. I was I was reading Quantum Revelation. Or is that what it's called? Quantum Revelation? See, the synchronicities are abounding. Paul Levy is on the show next week uh, <laughs> with his new book called Undreaming Wetiko or Wetiko. Oh, Wetiko. Um, yes. Okay. And uh, don't miss it. And actually, his last book just blew my mind because I, <laughs> I don't know why the guy is is uh, lovely and crazy. He goes from Buddhism and Christ consciousness and Jung and Rudolf Steiner and everything. And in the end, actually, in the end, you land with live your creative genius. The thing that's going to save the world is not to try to change necessarily, you know, the governments or certain structures. It's really for each and every one of us to live our creative genius. That's the essence of Paul Levy, I think. Um, yeah. And so he, he'll be there next week. Porta, I, again, I thank you and wish you so much luck with everything that you're thank doing. You. And I'm excited and happy that you're now, um, yeah, living even more facets of your beautiful <laughs> voice and your music. I do remember I asked you a crazy question at that time because you were inventing all these beautiful head coverings and I already felt like you were breaking out at that time you had like <laughs> feathers and everybody else is in their white little things you were like you had like gorgeous little you know head things on your head and I was like really so yeah so you are now Porter's singer 
and um, stay well. Continue to oh, share you your, your love with the world, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you so All much. Right. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.